Welcome to this presentation in which we're going to talk about how to prepare and format an inner office memorandum. Well, let's begin by talking about what is an inner office memorandum? Why do we write them and uh, what are their features? Well, um, an inner office memorandum is usually going to be a single page. Yeah, I can imagine a situation where it might be more than one page, but it's usually a single page and it's usually not much more than a few sentences on the page. So it's a very short document. And it's usually written to document a particular event, a particular task that's been performed, or perhaps to kind of function as a cover note to a larger document. Um, this is a document, as you can tell by the name, it's inter-office, so it's going from one office in a law firm to another. It's never going to leave the law firm, so it's not something that typically the client sees. It's not something that typically anyone outside of the law firm receives. Um, if you're going to send something outside of the law firm, you're going to use a letter or possibly an email. So uh, the, an important word in this is inter-office. And again, when we're referring to office, we mean an individual's office. So it's going from one office in a law firm to another office in a law firm. Sometimes students wonder, well, what's the difference between an inter-office memorandum and a legal memorandum? Well, the first thing to say is that no matter where you work, you're gonna see inter-office memoranda. If you end up becoming uh, any, any kind of uh, white collar type job, I guess I should say. So if you decide to become an accountant, there's going to be an inner office memoranda. If you decide to become an engineer, also inner office memoranda. It is a common form of communicating in an office. And it's nothing particularly um, uh, unique about it compared to what you would see in a different type of business. A legal memorandum is something that you only find in law firms or law departments. That's a much longer document that is prepared to show legal research. You wouldn't contain legal research in an inner office memorandum. It's not designed for that type of project. It's again much shorter and a much quicker write than you would see in a, in a legal memorandum. So if you prepared a legal memorandum in another course, Awesome, wonderful, we're not doing one in this course, um, but it is a very important document to be familiar with. It's gonna be longer with lots of different parts and lots of different structural aspects, but that's not something you need to know for this class. So now that we've covered what an inner office memorandum is, when do we use it? Well, again, the function of it kind of tells you when you're gonna use it. You're using it to tell somebody, hey, I've done X or, um, here's some information that you asked about why, or hey, see attached, there's a document you need, those types of uh, formats. Um, again, you're not going to use it for legal research and you're not going to prepare it to share with the client. So those, so it has, it, it, it's an important tool. You'll very likely in many law firms produce one or more a day, um, but it, it's something that you'll routinely see from other people in the law firm, you'll be receiving them, say from HR, there may be a memorandum that comes out regularly, you know, Bob is gonna be out of the office today, or hey, we're getting ready to sign up for benefits or that type of thing. Uh, it used to be that these were usually paper. Uh, many times they've moved, they've, they've been formatted for online purposes. So um, you may find your inner office memorandum is online. In other words, it may be an attachment to an email. But we're going to pretend for the sake of, of this purpose that it really is a paper document that you're distributing. It really wouldn't be any different though if you were to simply attach this uh, document and, and send it through an email message. So this is the first thing to know what an inner office memorandum is. Let's go to our next topic which is how we're going to format an inner office memory. By the way, you may well want to jot down this information. At any point, you're welcome to uh, put me on hold and go ahead and, and jot this information down. You won't find this information on, ca on Canvas, so um, you may want to pause so you can get all that information down. Now we're going to talk about our next thing, which is uh, document formatting guidelines in a global sense. Um, we'll see that three of these items are going to be pretty much how we format all of our documents. And so one good approach here is going to be to set up 
our Word format so that we don't have to think about it every time. Uh, most people who have, have regularly used Microsoft Word have certain default settings that they have selected that meet their needs. And when they use those default settings, they don't have to think about it. Now, of course, if they want to change it, they're going to have to change it. But most people kind of have settings that they use, you know, the vast majority of the time. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure our margins are set up correctly. And let's see, I think that's under, yes, we said it's under layout. Okay, so we're going to go, usually most folks start it, spend most of their time at home. We're going to go over here to layout and we're going to go to margins. And I'm going to go with normal. That's one inch all the way around. There are some courts that have different margins, so you're going to want to change it at that point. But the vast majority of people use normal margins. In this course, that's what we're going to use for everything. So you can just go ahead and set that up as your normal situation and go from there. Orientation, you don't have to worry about that. There's only two orientations. One is portrait and landscape. We're always going to use portrait, and that's the default setting anyway. In this course, we're always going to use letter size paper. That's eight and a half by 11. You may think, well, why aren't we using legal? That sounds like something we ought to be doing. There are some courts in the United States that do do legal. Um, I don't know of any in Texas, and so we're going to always use letter size. So again, all of these are just your usual settings. You're not going to have to do anything to make those happen. Okay, now we're going to go back to home for a second. Now we're going to select our font. How do we go about doing that? Well, we can set our font every time if we want. We can find Times New Roman. I use it all the time, so it's really quick for me to find. But if you don't regularly use it, you'll just scroll down to the T's and find where Times New Roman is and click on it. And then it'll become your font. And most people use 12 point. It's the usual one. So you just go ahead and click on that. But that's not going to change your system forever. So if you want to change it forever, you go over here and you click in the font box. You see you're on home and you go to font and you click in this corner. And you can go ahead and set these up for default. And that's what I've done. I've set it up for Times New Roman, regular, 12. And all I have to do is hit this button for default and it's good to go. Uh, for this document only are all documents based upon the normal template. I'm set. I can change it whenever I want to. I can change my default setting or I can change it for just that one document. If you do that, you're going to save yourself a lot of extra work and possibly losing points because in this course, we're always going to use Times New Roman. We won't always use 12 point, but certainly the vast majority of time we'll use 12 point. Okay, now let's go over here to the paragraph. We're going to pick on this item right here, which is line and paragraph spacing. We're going to pick 1.15 and then we're going to remove space under this. So we want it to say add and add. So 1.15 add and add. Those are the secrets that we want to go for. And um, we are, don't have any spacing before or after. Don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. And we're going to set this as default. And we're going to do this for the normal template. We're done. It's as easy as that. Assuming you're always working on the same computer and no one changes your, your settings, you're probably good to go. You may want to double check, though. Make sure your settings are what you want them to be at the top of your page. Now we're going to look at our last setting. And this one is 1.15. We won't always use 1.15 in this course, but uh, for this document, we'll need to use 1.15. So be aware, this one's going to change sometimes. You may say, well, why don't we automatically add spaces? You may look up here and say, well, Gruber, clearly you have a space, but oops, I have a, have a hanging thing there. Let me go ahead and fix that. Let's see. Oops. Ah, oh, here's the hanging. Okay. Oops. Well, we we won't worry about this right now. 
and then some formatting things that aren't necessarily what I want. There we go. Apologize for that. Okay, so you see that I have a line here. Now I could have programmed this to automatically add a line if I wanted to, but I like to control these touches myself. The reason I like to control them is that um, I want my document to look the way I want it to look, not necessarily the way that Microsoft Word wants my document to look. Sometimes, not so much in this document, but sometimes in legal documents, formatting is going to be different than kind of what Microsoft Word expects. And so if I'm having to kind of force Microsoft to do what I want, it can become almost this tug of will between me and Microsoft Word. So as much as I can remove Microsoft Word's kind of their AI from the equation and just do it the way I want to, so much the better. It makes my life easier. So it doesn't mean that we aren't going to have a space between paragraphs. We absolutely will. But what I want to do is I want to be the one controlling that space. Maybe I decide that I don't want it to be quite that big. I can make it shorter. Or maybe I want a big space. I can make it bigger. I'm in control. Microsoft Word isn't. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. This, when I have add add here, this puts me in control, not Microsoft Word. Okay. So now we're going to go and so now we should have everything set up. Now sometimes people when they're drafting, especially the body of a document that they like to double space it. That's absolutely fine for your draft stage. If you want to do it that way, more power to you. Um, that's especially helpful if you're planning on printing it out and looking at it because you can write comments in and things like that. Just be sure that when you're getting it back to ready to go that you do single space it. And when I say single space, I mean 1.15. It's a little bit more than single space. Okay, so be sure that you have these formatted because these are going to be document wide items. I encourage you whenever you're working on a document to make sure from the get go your settings are all right so you're going to have a beautiful document. You're not going to have to remember to check it later on. Now we're going to move to the heading section. The heading section is in some sense the least important part of the memo so it doesn't include very much content at all but it has the most formatting stuff so we're going to see kind of the most uh, formatting tricks are going to be in this section the hardest part to write is going to be the body but the hardest part to format is going to be the heading so let's get started the first part of the heading and i guess some people would argue that it's not really a part of the heading is our title so we're going to want to capitalize the first letter of each word so it's going to be memorandum with a capital M or inner office memorandum with a capital I and a capital M. Now you can capitalize all the words, all the letters in the word if you want to. Um, something like this. You can capitalize all the letters if you want to here. You can manually type it out. You can do these little, I'm just going to bring this to the next line. Oops, so we have a format. Another thing we can do is we can um, do this. We are going to do small caps. Actually, I guess I need to go back to lowercase. So this is an, a nice a nice approach. So our, our true capital letter is taller and then our letters that would ordinarily be lowercase are capital letters, but they're shorter. So I can go ahead and change this back to where we started. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make everything lowercase. Oops, I think I'm going to get rid of small caps. And now I'm just going to go back and do this. But if I wanted, again, to use the small caps, I highlight it, I go to font, and I do the small caps. Again, that's kind of your call. When it's just one word, small caps doesn't look as nice, but when you are doing two words, it can look pretty nice. Let me just show you what that looks like. You aren't required to. You have your choice here. Do I capitalize everything? 
Do I only capitalize the first letters or do I use small caps? Just what you think looks best, okay? Then you're gonna center this material on the line. The way to center documents is this middle button. I'm just gonna center this particular line. You can see it jumps to the middle. Now, if you have um, your margins indented, it's not gonna be to the middle of the line. It's gonna be the middle from where you have it indented to the, to the beginning point and the end point. So if you want it truly centered on the page, you're gonna have to use your margins to adjust it. Um, so that is an example. And of course, you're really not gonna put it in quotes. I'm just putting it in quotes so you can see what the content is. So it looks something like this. Now you're also gonna put it in bold. It would be fine if you wanted to make it larger than 12 point. It's also fine to keep it in 12 point. I probably wouldn't go with 13 point. If I were gonna increase it, I'd probably go with 14 point. 13 point looks like it's kind of a mistake. Maybe you weren't paying attention. 16 point might work if you liked it. 15 or 16 though is probably what I would go with. So now we have our inner office memorandum nicely set up. Um, now we're gonna go to look talking about tabbing. This is a major issue in documents. There are some students who every semester never get to the point that they've mastered this. So um, I'm gonna talk now, but I'll talk about it later. But please, if um, I'm encouraging you to pay particular attention to this because this is something that uh, will result in point deductions throughout the semester. And I think the reason why sometimes people don't correct the problem is that they don't really understand what I'm talking about. And so I'm gonna to try to explain it in this presentation and then also in a few af after this to make sure everybody has gotten this. So if we look up here, on, we're still in the home category. We're gonna go over here to this Pilcro. That's a backwards P. I'm gonna hit that. And that shows all the formatting in my document. So let me make it go away and I'm gonna make it appear. So you can see there's this little arrow sign. That means I use my tab key. So where's the tab key? On your keyboard, immediately above the caps lock key, you'll see a key that's written T-A-B. And that is what gives you the tab. I'm gonna hit the tab button right now. Actually, that's not a good example. Sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna hit it in the middle of the line. So I'm gonna tab. And you can see every time I hit tab, we get another arrow. So you may wonder, well, how does the tab key know how far to indent? Well, there are preset tabs in Word, but you can add your own tabs. You can add your own spots where you want the tab key to go to. So on this line, if I really want a series of tabs right in here, you can see I'm adding them. So now when I tab, you can see those little bitty tabs I added are all close together. Now we're going back to the old old stocks. I didn't add any over there. So I can control where my tabs are. And the neat thing about tabs is it helps us line things up vertically. So if I really want, let's say I really want this L here to line up with this um, uh, quotation mark, that's impossible to do with spacing. I could all day long, do a line over here and then do a line over here. I can get it kind of close, but I'm never gonna get it exactly close. I mean, I'll get it close, but I will never get it exact. But if I want to use, but if I use a tab key instead, it's super easy. They now line up perfectly. And that's why we don't use space keys. The other reason we don't use space keys is that space keys take up, they take a lot of energy. And so if I'm, if I'm putting these in here and then somebody later on needs to get into my document and make changes, they have to erase all of these extra spaces. So it's creating unnecessary work. Even if tabs have to be erased, there's only a few, so it's not very difficult to go ahead and do that. So the time that we use the space key is between words. And you'll see the space key is this little dot right here. There's between every single word and they're also between sentences. Some people put two dots or two spaces between sentences. That's fine if you prefer that. But um, 
we don't we're, we're, we're never going to use the space key probably more than twice if again you think well i ought to put three spaces in here probably what you really ought to do is put a tab in there and if you don't like where the tab ends up go ahead and adjust your tab here up on the line and to do that all you do is literally just click on it you can add a tab just like all i'm doing is is a clicking with my mouse on these various spots okay so um, be sure to know where your tabs are and to use it when you want to indent now you will use some models in this class and models can be tremendously helpful i encourage you to use them some of the times in the class you'll, you'll need to use them but also remember that if you haven't prepared the model, there may be all kinds of formatting junk in that document. And so before you get started, one thing you're gonna to wanna to do, probably before you make any changes, is click on the Pilcro so you can see the formatting and clean it up. If the previous user of this model used the space bar to indent instead of using the tab key, you're gonna clean that up. Even though you didn't put it in the model, I know that you want to make sure your documents are gorgeous and easy to use in the future. And so I'm going to expect that you go ahead and make those changes. So don't think, oh, well, because I didn't add any spaces and I'm using a model, I'm not going to get a deduction for not using the tab key. If there are some of those errors in the original document, I'm going to count off. And I'm just going to let you know right now, there are most of our models that we use in this class have uh, the incorrect usage of the space bar. I've kind of planted some things like that so that you'll have practice in making those corrections. Okay, so that's the information about tabbing. Remember that this information isn't just for this particular assignment, but for lots of other, in fact, all assignments really. Now, bolding of the heading is going to vary. Some law firms do it one way, some law firms do it another way. For this particular assignment, though, the, the rule of thumb we're going to use is you're going to bold the name of the document, whether you use memorandum or an office memorandum, and you're going to bold the subject line. You're not going to bold the rest. Now, some people do bold these categories, the to, the from, the date, and the subject. Um, and again, that's perfectly legitimate, but you know, for our purposes, that's not what our particular law firm does. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about what we capitalize in our heading. We've already talked about what we, how we capitalize the term memorandum, but we are gonna capitalize our to, our from, our date, and our subject. We are gonna capitalize, we're gonna capitalize all the words in these expressions. We're gonna capitalize, obviously, people's first name and their last name and their title but we're just gonna capitalize the first letter. So if my name is Lily Lang Tree, I'm gonna capitalize the L and then the L, but I'm not gonna capitalize the I-L-Y or the A-N-G-T-R-E-E. -E. And if my title is Lily Lang Tree is Senior Paralegal, I'm gonna capitalize Senior and Paralegal. If my title is Senior Paralegal to um, Marsha um, Barry, I'm going to capitalize Marsha Barry, but I'm not going to capitalize a little bitty word like two. So you capitalize all major words, but little propositional words aren't going to be capitalized. Now you may think, well, should I spell out senior or not? And that's really your choice. I would definitely spell out the major word. So let's say you are the secretary, um, or let's say your title is administrative assistant. It would be fine to spell, oops, <laughs> sorry about that. To spell out the whole word, or you could abbreviate admin assistant, but your actual surname or not I'm sorry it's not surname. your name your actual noun your actual title word is going to be spelled out so don't uh, abbreviate the noun so to speak okay so um, that is the rules about capitalization 
Each one of these segments are going to be presented in this order. So we're going to go with our to section first, then our from section, then our date, and then our subject. This is the most common order for inner office memoranda, but you may find that your office does things somehow differently. Obviously, you'll adjust well any of these aspects to your the particular format in your office. So our first component is going to be two. As we know, we're going to capitalize the TO and we're going to end with a colon. You've already learned about the colon, if, if you didn't already know, which you probably did, um, in our email because, of course, that's what we use at the end of our salutation. But if you need a refresher, the colon is the key to the uh, right of the L key on the keyboard, and you have to shift to get that. The semicolon is the one key that you get when you don't shift. So let me just type it so you can see. I'm going to tab. Now I'm going to do the semicolon. The semicolon is what we might call a wink if we're doing emoticons. And this is going to, now I've shift, and this is going to be the colon. So it's just a dot above a dot. It, again, it's the same thing we use when we're doing dear Mr. Smith or whatever. So two colon. Now we're going to tab once. Now we may need to tab twice to line up the rest of our text because obviously two is really short and subject is really long. So once we get to the point to get everything formatted and we see, oh, well, gosh, the subject line, once we tab the subject line once, we're out here, we're going to have to tab, tab twice maybe for two. And who knows whether we'll have to tab once or twice for from and date. But keep in mind, sometimes there's more than one tab you need to do here. You're going to provide the name or names of the recipients, the first name and then the last name. Again, some law firms do. Smith, comma, Harold, but we're going to do Harold Smith. And we're going to put each name on a line. So if we have to Harold Smith, and then below Harold Smith, we have uh, Jessica Zavala, then the, the J and Jessica will line up exactly with the H in Harold. You may find you need to tap three times to get that to line up. So here's an example of what we're going for. Two, and you can see I tabbed twice because I could see this is a sh super short tab. So I'm going to need to, and we're sending it to Beatrix Potter, obviously the writer of um, the uh, uh, Peter Rabbit stories. Okay, now we're going to order the name. How you order the names, in this case, Beatrix Potter is just one person, but if we're sending it to um, Harold Smith and Jessica Zavala, we, um, you know, of course, you have to decide, well, which name goes first? Here we go. Obviously, you're not going to have a one there, but here we go. Um, you can see I can just never line those up. Um, so one approach is to put them alphabetical. S comes before Z. Another way would be to group all the people in a particular category. All the partners in the firm go first, and then you would alphabetize within that category. All associates come next, and then you'd alphabetize within that category. All paralegals go next, you'd alphabetize within that category. All support staff goes next, you'd alphabetize within that category. Um, either Any of those paths are fine. We're not actually not going to have that on this particular assignment, so you don't need to worry about how you're going to do that. But I just wanted to flag it as an issue so that you would be aware. And usually you wouldn't put commas or the word and anywhere. It would just be a list going down the page. So you might find that you have, I'm going to make that go away, you might find that you have um, an email that you need to send to a long, a large group of people. And it may make sense to, instead of listing everybody's name, Bob, Susan, Teresa, Mary, Henry, Tabitha, um, you may have a group within the law firm, uh, all litigation attorneys and paralegals, or all trust and estates paralegals or some subgroup and you may be able to use that. That's fine if your law firm happens to do that. Obviously it would need to be set up with a law firm and whomever distributes those emails will need to have a list that they can cross-reference so they know well who are the trust and estates paralegals 
And so uh, again, that's going to depend upon the practices in your law firm. So we've covered the to section. Now let's go to the from section. So it's going to be set up very similarly. We're going to obviously capitalize the word from and put that colon at the end. We're going to tab once. It's possible you might need to tab a second time. This is obviously where your name is going to go. So your first name, then your last name. Then you're going to need to add a comma. And the reason for the comma is you're going to put your title next. So after the comma, you're going to add a space and then you're going to type your title. Um, we don't have to have the title in this, the, the two section. There probably, there perhaps are some law firms that do put titles um, after the recipient's name, but it's not necessary and we're not going to do that here. But it is necessary, especially when you are not an attorney, to put your title on the memorandum because on a law firm memorandum, the assumption will be that the person sending the memorandum is an attorney unless you correct the, the person. You may think to yourself, well, the person who's receiving my um, memorandum knows very well I'm not an attorney. Well, that's true, but it's possible that this email or this, let me excuse me, this memorandum might be used years from now. And the person who is reviewing it now that you've, you know, moved on to some, you know, island in the south of France or whatever, um, that person doesn't know who you are. And so they may not have the institutional knowledge to know, oh, Tabitha McKenzie is a paralegal, not an attorney. So you always want to include your title. Um, so here we go. Here's just an example of how you might do that. So you can see, let me put the poker back. I just did one space. Obviously, if you needed another space, you could add one. But from Cynthia Groover, comma, senior paralegal. Again, if I wanted to do this, that would also be fine. And let's go now to the date. So our third section is going to be the date. Um, again, we're going to capitalize all the words in date, all the letters in date, and end with a colon. We're going to tab once again, twice, maybe necessary. And you're going to write the date that you are actually sending the memo. Maybe that you worked on it on Monday, but it's not actually going out of your office until the following day. You were at late work late to say 8 p.m. The mail person isn't coming around until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, and that's when it'll get picked up. Well, under those circumstances, you ought to date it when it's actually leaving your office. Now, for some reason, it was especially important that it be dated the date that um, the, 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 8 a, 8, the, the evening of um, the, the night that you worked on it, then you'd probably want to manually um, distribute it, maybe uh, take it to the um, inboxes of the people that you're sending it to. So just be aware that um, it should be almost like you were sending out a stamped letter. You know, the post office isn't going to stamp it with the date until it leaves your office, obviously. And so be sure that the date is accurate. And then we're going to write the date in standard format in the United States. So it's going to be the month obviously with the first letter capitalized, but no other letters, a space, the day, and if it's a, a you know, if it's after uh, the ninth day, 10th day, you're going to have two digits. If it's just though in the first nine days of the month, you're just going to have a one digit. You're not going to put a zero, zero seven, you're just going to do a seven. You're, then you will do a comma, a space, and then the complete year, all four digits. Don't abbreviate the month, and include all four digits in your year. And also don't do a, you know, 6, 12, 2020. We're not doing uh, that. We're actually doing the formal version. Also don't use um, the, uh, the ordinal uh, aspects, the THs, the STs, the NDs after the date. Um, we don't do this here, but we don't do this ever in documents. Um, so if you would get out of that habit, um, that's going to be the rule going forward. So remember that whether you're writing a letter or preparing a document to be filed in court, we are going to use this format each time. And so here's an example. Again, the date, colon, tab, 
capital O for October, the whole word spelled out, space three, notice no zero in front of three, comma, space 2020. And we're good to go. Um, and that is the date that we need to use. So hopefully this information has been helpful. I'm gonna end this presentation this time. We still have in the heading to work on the subject line, and then we have the body of the heading to work on. Plus I have an example of a document that needs a little help. Actually, let's, let's work on that before we say end here. So I have a document that does need a little bit of work. Let's go ahead and clean this up. So the first thing that I notice before I get started is that I have the right font, Times New Roman 12 point. I go over here, I look, yeah, it's 1.15. I have add, add. So everything looks good. First thing I'm gonna do is click in front of M and I'm gonna center it. I'm good there. Here, um, I don't, I'm not gonna put anything in bold because we haven't gotten to the subject line yet, but I am gonna capitalize these words. Now I can manually capitalize it or I can go in and do this. Either way is fine. Doesn't matter. You can see that these have kind of this rough edge to it because that is because I have spaces instead of tab. So I'm going to get rid of the spaces and I'm going to tab. I'm going to get rid of the spaces here and tab. We're in the spaces here in tab. Um, there really is a tab there, it's just the world's shortest, smallest tab. So I'm gonna tab again so everything lines up. So you can see my L is directly above my M and my F. I couldn't do that with a space bar. Okay, so we have Lawrence McKenna, that's the recipient. That looks fine. Let's assume I am Miranda Smith. Well, I'm missing my title, so I'm going to say my title is Legal Assistant. Okay, so that's good. And now I'm going to go to my date, and you can see there's some problems with this. February, um, was it third? Is that what I wrote? Uh, comma, 2020. So it looks like it is appropriately formatted. I'm gonna make the Pilcrow go away. Just see what it looks like. Looks like I've got some extra spaces here. I'm gonna remove those. And so I'm ready to go ahead and add my subject line next. And that will be in our next presentation. Thanks for your attention. I hope that this was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.